In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called combination sum 4. So uh, previously, I did a uh, legal video called combination sum uh, number 1, number 2, number 3. So this is just a follow-up question, or I should say another question that's related to combination sum. But this question, I find it's kind of similar to DP, right? Dyna dynamic programming, which follows the, uh, the distinct ways dynamic programming pattern, where we want to find the total distinct ways uh, for the given um, parameters or, or the given uh, values, right? So you can see here we're given an array of distinct integer values and a target integer uh, value. Return the number of possible combinations that can add up to this target. So you can see the target is guaranteed to fit in a 32-bit integer. And here you can see we have an example of uh, integer array which has distinct values. We will not have uh, values that are same to each other. And you can see here, we also have a target of four. So we want to know how many combinations can we come up with that has a sum that's equal to four, right? You can see here we have one plus one plus one plus one, uh, because you can see here we can use the same element more than once, right? And you, we can also have uh, just one plus one plus two, or one plus two plus one. You can see that this is a different combination as this, right? Even though those values are the same, but different combination, different order, but it still counts, right? You can, we can also have 1 plus 3, uh, 2 plus 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 1. So we want to know how many combinations can we come up with have a, has a sum that's equal to the target, right? And know that the different sequence are counted as different combinations. And uh, let's say we have a situation where we have the value, right? In this case, there's only one element, and this element is actually bigger than the target sum then there's no way that we can come up with a target sum which is going to return zero, right? Because there's no combinations. Uh, because even though if I 9 plus 9 plus 9, it still it will never reach to, to 3 because 9 is, all, is always bigger than 3, right? So how can we solve this problem? So let's say we have an example like this, right? So in this case, if our current sum is 4, and or I should say the target sum is 4, we want to find total combinations that we can find that has a sum that's equal to 4. So in this case, what we can do is we can choose n number of, uh, or I should say we can go down n number of paths because in this case we can first take the first element or the second element or the third element to be added onto our combination, right? As long as it satisfies the condition, of course. So first what we're going to do is we're going to add one onto our combination so now we have a target that, that we have a current sum of three we can also add the second element we have a current sum of two we add a third element we have a current sum of one and now in this case we can also choose to go down a number of path right in this case for each and every current sum so if i current if i have a current sum of three i, ha I can choose one add it onto our combination so now I have a current sum of two, right? And then I also can choose to add two onto our combination. Now I have a current sum of one left to fill, right? In this case, I can also have add three onto our current combination. And you can see we have a zero and you can see we have a uh, current sum, which is equal to zero. That means we found a path that has a sum that's equal to four, right? Because you can see here, I, I add a one here and I also add a three here. So one plus three will pretty much give us uh, four, right? So that's why you can see we have zero, uh, L, uh, zero sum left to fill. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna return to the, its parent, say we found one combination, and same thing if I go down this path, I can choose, choose to, um, in this case I can choose to say, I want, uh, I want to add one, in this case, if I add one, and in this case it will give us zero, and then we also have a combination. So it's, we're also gonna return back to its parent and say, okay, well we also have one combination here, right? And if I try to go down to, to add a two, in this case, we're gonna get a negative value, right? If we get a negative value, we're just going to uh, return zero because there's no way we can add or find a combination. And same thing for two, if I add one, I have one common, uh, a current sum of one left. If I add a two, I have zero combination sum left. If I add a three, I have a negative value, so I won't count that, right? And if I have a one left, 
in this case I can continue I can choose a 1 in this case I give I get a sum of 0 if I get a out of 2 in this case I will get a negative value right so in this case I won't count that right so what's going to happen is we found a path so what's going to happen is we're going to return back to his parents say well, there's one way one combination that has a sum that's equal to 4 and it's also going to return to its parent stack to say well there is one combination for its uh, to find a sum that's equal to 4 or the target and this we also have one path as well because in this case 2 minus 2 is 0 right so we also have one path or one combination so you can see there there's a total of two combinations for this element right here right so what's going to happen is this element is going to return back to its parent stack say okay I have two combinations sum that has a sum that's equal to 4 so now for 3 if I want to find the total combinations uh, for if the sum is 3 then there are 1 2 plus 3 plus 4 so there are a total of 4 combinations right you can choose 1 plus 1 plus 1 right 1 plus 2 uh, 2 plus 1 right or even a, a 3 right so you can see we have a 3 path or actually 4 path right because you can see here I can have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 2 uh, sorry, yeah, 1 plus 2, or 2 plus 1, or just plus 3, right? So we have four combinations. And then now we have four combinations. Then we're going to return back to his parent and say, okay, for a combination sum, for a sum that's equal to, four, uh, equal to 3, I have four combinations. And then you can see here, we also have to do the same thing for this path. But wait a second, we already compute this path already in here. We know that 2 has a total of two combinations. In this case, we can do 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 2. So we're going to return back to a set parent and say, I have two, two combinations, right? If I have a current sum of 1, wait a second, I also compute that before. You can see here, if I have a current sum is equal to 1, I have one combination, which is just 1. So I, I'm going to return back to this parent and say, I have 1. So 4 plus 2 plus 1, how many combinations do I have if I have a current sum of 4? In this case, it's going to be 7, right? So I have 7 combinations. Uh, for if I, if the current sum is seven, or sorry, if the current sum is four, right? Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a top-down approach with memoization, and this will improve the time complexity down to a, a down from uh, exponential to a uh, t times n. T is basically target, right? And the and the n is number of elements, right? So for each and every single recursion stack we have to make a number of choices right and for each and every those choices we have to do that t number of times right in this case the height of the tree is t so to do this in code first i create a nums integer array and uh, we're basically going to make this as a global variable so that i can create a helper function and be able to use the nums integer array right and then i'm also going to create a cache array and this cache integer array is going to have a size of targets, right? Because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to cache for each and every single targets, for each and every single sum that we have left. Uh, we're going to uh, be able, to, we're going to be able to cache that, right? If we uh, visit that element again, we can be able to return the pre-computed value. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say this dot nums is equal to nums. And uh, this dot cache is equal to integer with a size of target plus one, right? Because we also have to include the uh, the the target element itself because in the array is zero based. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a helper function, right? Where we're starting, we want to figure out what's the total combinations if we have a current if the current sum is equal to target, right? And this will give us the total combinations, uh, unique combinations, right? Or distinct combinations um, that we can have, right? So now we can have create a helper function, which takes the current sum. And we want to figure out how many combinations that we can have uh, with the current sum, right? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the current sum is actually less than zero. If it's less than zero, that means we can just return zero because there is zero combinations that we can find if the current sum is a negative value, right? That means that the current sum is 
bigger than the cur the, the that means the current combination is bigger than the current sum, the target sum. So we can just return zero. And also, if the current sum is equal to zero, that means we found a path. So we can just return one, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate for each and every, every single element in nums. We're going to traverse or do a DFS for each and every single path. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a integer variable called total, which keep track of total combinations that we have seen so far. So initially it's zero, right? So in this case, we're going to say total plus equal to helper at num. So in this case, we're going to say current sum minus num, right? In this case, this will uh, give us a new current sum. And we also have to find total combinations for this new current sum. Uh, if we decide to go down this path, right? And then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to return this is how many total combinations that we can have if the current sum, if if we have a current sum, if, if this is our current sum, right? So in this case, what we're going to do now is we're going to run our code. And let's try it with a few more examples. And you can see we have a success. And now let's try to implement the cache, right? So if we visit this place before, if cache at current sum does not equal to null, then we can just return cache at current sum. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to compute it, and then we're going to cache it. Cache at current sum has this number of combinations that has a sum that has a sum that's e that has a sum that's equal to current sum right and now we're just going to run our code and you can see we also have our success and now let's try to submit our code and you can see we have our success so this is how we solve the combination sum number four and now let's take a look at how we can do this using a bottom to up approach so how can we solve this problem using a bottom up approach so to solve this problem in a bottom-up approach, basically let's start with the bottom, right? Let's say if our current sum is one, and this is our same example, right? If our current sum is one, how many uh, how many combinations can we find? In this case, we have an array of one, two, and three, right? So in this case, we, what we can do is we can have to iterate each and every single elements that we have in our array. So if I have one minus one, I have a zero. If I have a one minus, in this case, two, I have a negative value. If I have one minus three, I have a negative value as well. So if I have a zero, then in, in this case, I have a way, right? I have, I have one combination, right? If I have a negative value, I have zero combination. So in this case, if, if I have a zero, that means I have one combination. If I have a negative value, I have a zero combination. So in this case, one plus zero plus zero for if I have a current sum of one, then I have one combination, right? If I have a current sum is one, I have one combination. Um, and what if I have a current sum two, right? In this case, I can have one minus one, right? I can also have one minus two, sorry, two, two minus one and two minus two. And I can also have two minus three, which have a negative value, right? So those are the sum. So if I have a current sum of one, how many current, how many combinations can we find? But wait a second, we already compute this value, right? In this case, one, we know that there's only one combination if I have the current sum of one. So what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve that. We're going to save the pre-computed value in our cache array, just like how we did in the top-down approach, right? We're going to retrieve that and just say, okay, for this value, if the, current, if the current sum is one, then total combinations that we can find is just going to be one because we already compute this value. So we're going to return, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to say this is one, so one, right? One combination. If I have a zero, in this case, I have a one combination as well, right? And then if I have a negative value, I, I, I have zero combination, right? So I can just have zero. So one plus one plus zero. In this case, I have total combinations of two, right? In this case, I can have one plus one, which is equal to two. Two is just, have. Uh, in this case, has a combination of one, right? If I have just a combination of two, in this case, I have a sum of two, right? 
So now this is how we solve this problem. And now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So to do this in code, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a cache array that has a size of target plus one, right? Because in this case, like I said earlier, cache or integer arrays is zero based. We want to know each and every single positions, total combinations uh, that we can have for each and every single element in the cache array, right? For each and every single sum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom. So for integer i is equal to zero, or yeah, in this case, equal to one, and we're gonna just gonna set the first element to be, to be equal to uh, one, right? So we're gonna set this to one because if we have the current sum is equal to zero, right? Then we have one way, one combinations, right? Um, and then in this case, while i is uh, less than target plus one, i plus plus. And for each and every single sum that we have, basically i is equal to the sum, right? For each and every single sum, what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate each and every single element. So in this case, we have integer num in nums, right? For each and every single numbers that we have in nums, what we're gonna do is first we're gonna check to see if, so we're gonna maybe re rename this, so in this case, um, current sum is equal to i. So uh, maybe we can put this outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check to see if the current sum minus num is, if it's bigger than or equal to zero, that means what we're gonna do is we're gonna compute we're gonna compute the current value, right? In this case, cache at current sum, right? In this case, the current sum uh, is equal to the, uh, the the value, right? Plus equal to uh, cache at current sum minus num. Because we know that the current sum minus num is a positive value. And we already compute that value before because we're going from the bottom to the top, right? So we're going to save that, um, add it onto our current cache at current sum, right? So at the end, we're going to get the total current, uh, total combinations, right? For each and every single path. And at the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return cache at target, right? So this will basically give us uh, the total number of combinations if we have this uh, if if this is our current sum, if this is our target sum, right? So now let's try to run our code. And uh, now let's try to six, uh, submit. And you can see we have our success. And as you can see here, the time complexity uh, in this case is gonna be m time, uh, or n times t, right? t is the target and um, uh, n is gonna be the number of items that we have in nums. And the space complexity is also gonna be T, right? Where we have uh, basically for each and every single sum, uh, we're going to compute a total number of combinations. And to get the current um, total of combinations, right? For the tar current target sum, we have to uh, get the sum of all the, uh, all the total combinations for its uh, children stack, right? For, or its each and every single path. So there you have it and thank you for watching.